Good morning. Bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Steve Staples. Je suis le président de l'Institut Rideau. Uh, my name is Steve Staples. I'm the president of the uh, Rideau Institute. We are an independent, nonpartisan research organization based in Ottawa. It focuses on defense and foreign policy issues. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by our uh, visiting research fellow, Mr. Stuart Webb, who has also done extensive work on the F-35 issue and government procurement, um, as the Rideau Institute has. Uh, we just wanted to uh, provide a, uh, our own perspective on the developments over the uh, over the uh, last uh, 12 hours. It's been a remarkable um, amount of information that has been uh, that has been coming out through various leaks. Um, but uh, we want to, I think we want to seek some clarity in terms of what the government position is and in particular what are the findings of the KPMG report that they have been sitting on for a number of days now. Uh, we're deeply concerned, deeply concerned that the government has received their independent costing report that they commissioned through their seven point plan which was announced earlier this year and they have refused to release it up until now. Uh, initial indications are that this report contains some very bad news for the government on this massive F-35 stealth fighter procurement and we think that this report should be made uh, public right away so that uh, Canadians and parliamentarians are able to uh, look at its content and make uh, an assessment uh, on that. Uh, we don't want the government to be ragging the puck with this report, uh, waiting until the clock runs out and the House uh, rises uh, for the Christmas uh, break, uh, hoping that things just cool down as we have seen in the past. But this report from KPMG should be released uh, right away. As you know, we've raised concerns about the F-35 going back as far as October 2010 when we released this report called Pilot Error, Why the F-35 Stealth Fighter is Wrong for Canada. We've had a number of concerns um, about, the, uh, about the aircraft uh, on cost uh, and performance going back to 2010, and those concerns have not changed uh, in the last few years. Largely what we're seeing with the F-35, it's a model airplane. It's not fully completed yet. They're still piecing this aircraft uh, together. Uh, a number of flaws have already emerged. One of the main requirements that the government put in their statements of requirements was for a 360 degree view for the pilot. Uh, and uh, they use that as an argument to justify the F-35. Well, we know that helmet feature does not work now. And they, the tech technical people have had to try to go back and possibly look at alternatives to that. Uh, there's been concerns about the range, uh, the speed of the aircraft, and its appropriateness uh, for, for Canada. I think that also we need to talk about uh, what kind of aircraft do we need in Canada in this day and age. Do we need an F-35, which is essentially a stealthy bomb truck? The plane was designed to meet a number of requirements within the U.S to be able to deliver ordnance and, and missiles and bombs in the first few hours of an invasion. That's why it has the stealth uh, capability in a kind of shock and awe type mission. I don't think this is appropriate for what Canada needs for our own continental security, which should be the main focus of the Air Force uh, and its replacement of the CF-18s, uh, not a kind of uh, uh, first wave uh, attack stealth fighter uh, like the F-35 is being uh, uh, built, uh, built to be. So, um, I, I would. S what do we need to do at this point? What do we need to do? We think that first the government must release the uh, the KPMG report uh, right away. We think that this is essential so that Canadians are able to look at its content and discuss it in an open manner uh, with the House uh, still in session. Uh, number two, I think we need to start right over. Let's not create more independent bodies, bring in more experts to oversee a process that is already obviously deeply flawed. It seems like it's an attempt to kind of paper over uh, serious problems and, and keep trying to going, going with the same uh, flawed process. We need to start over. The good news is that we have time. The F-18s have gone through a major upgrade uh, in the order of two and a half billion dollars over the last number of years. And we have had uh, Air Force, retired Air Force officials here in this room 
uh, who have direct knowledge with uh, maintaining the CF-18 fleet and have said that used properly, these planes can be good and serve for Canada for many years to come. So there is no hurry. Uh, we, can take, uh, we can take our time. And third, I think we need to fundamentally look at what our essential needs are in replacing the F-18. This was the key step that was missed in deciding what kind of aircraft does Canada need to meet our legitimate defensive requirements going into the next uh, number of decades. I don't think any measurement of that would tell you that you need a stealth fighter like the F-35. Finally, as, as many people have called for and we would agree, we need a proper competition. Clear statement of requirements, once that's determined, an open and fair, uh, transparent uh, competition, which I think would require a number of characteristics. First, we need to have a fly-off with real airplanes that have proven performance, not model planes like the F-35, not simulators, as Lockheed Martin tried to do with the Koreans in their, in their recent procurement for aircraft. We need to have real airplanes in a fly-off where we can evaluate their performance based on uh, a legitimate statement of requirements. Second, we need to look at the job situation. Uh, this is an awful lot of money, Canadian taxpayers' dollars. Uh, this plane was removed from the typical IRB process or industrial regional benefits, uh, hoping that Lockheed Martin would source some of the work here in Canada. Instead, from a traditional standpoint uh, of major procurements like this, it's a dollar for dollar. Every dollar we spend requires a dollar of investment in some way in Canada. That should be part of the procurement. And Lockheed Martin and the F-35 team, if they want to compete, they're going to have to live with that. Um, and the third is we cannot impact our own financial security and our needs. We cannot ignore the fact that we have a major deficit. There has been cutbacks. Uh, there are major problems in our economy. Poverty is, in, is endemic. Social programs are becoming unraveled. Uh, this is uh, not a priority that we should be placing above those needs that we, other financial needs that we have here in Canada. And I think this gets back to the issue of time. We do not have to commit right away. We can see what happens into the future and then make our, our decision then. So I'm going to stop at that point and I'm happy to take any uh, questions. Stuart as well is available. Uh, um, to take any questions as well. So thank you. Just, just wondering. Go ahead. What do you see as Canada's needs when it comes to uh, military aircraft? And like, what do we need? What should our priority be? And what kind of uh, airplane should we get for it? Well, I think this, and this gets back to the essential question of def of defining what kind of aircraft do we need in this day and age. The F-18s, when we bought them, they are multi-role fighters, fighter bombers. That is, they can attack other planes in the air and they can drop bombs onto the ground. And over the 30 years that we've used them, uh, they mostly here in North America for continental defense. And we have deployed them a few times uh, on, uh, on missions abroad, three times, in fact, uh, in, uh, in the 30 years that we've had them. So it's not a very high uh, demand for aircraft. Uh, I, I think that what a good solution for Canada would be is, number one, to focus on our continental security. And what, is, what are the legitimate threats to Canada right now? Well, they're not nuclear-armed Russian bombers flying over the Arctic uh, like, uh, like the concern was when we bought the F-18s uh, originally. As we know, terrorists are hijacking planes and flying them into buildings. There's certainly a threat on that. Incidents like we had, you know, 9-11. Uh, um, and, and future possibilities where we have big events like the Olympics or something like that. So we need those kinds of aircraft that can interdict and protect Canadian cities. But you don't need a stealth fighter uh, to, be able to, uh, to be able to do that. Obviously need something that works in the Arctic and the harsh conditions uh, that are there. I don't think a priority should be on something that can fly in on the first wave of shock and awe and drop bombs while evading um, you know, enemy radars and things like that. That's not something that we uh, that we uh, that we need to have, nor that we need to pay for. Doesn't DND want this plane? Didn't, didn't all the CDSs say that, that this was the best plane? This was the only plane. Were they dictating uh, what was going on here? Uh, I think this has had the. Uh, well, to be honest, we've raised concern long before 2010 
going back to when we were originally part of the program, uh, um, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, we raised concerns that just through the industrial participation that we were doing at the time, putting in a little bit of money in the hopes of possibly getting contracts, that this was going to steer Canada to a direction where we would actually end up buying the aircraft at some point. Now, as you know, officials out in the public realm now who, who were there at the time said, no, it was always the vision that we could participate in the industrial programs and not have to actually buy the aircraft. And it's a bit of he said, she said right now uh, in terms of what that is. But clearly Lockheed Martin thinks that if you're going to get jobs and investment, you have to buy the aircraft. And that's what they're telling other countries. Uh, and, and, and it's what we've heard uh, our own government officials tell us here in, in Canada. So clearly Lockheed Martin has had, has had the lock on the F-35 and the replacement for the, F uh, for the CF-18s. And um, they have a tremendously effective lobby here. They've won billions of dollars in, uh, in contracts uh, from the Canadian government. And um, uh, I think that this has dramatically skewed the, the process uh, so that uh, uh, we, uh, we found the solution and then we had to go out and manufacture the problem for it, or the government uh, did. So that's why I think we've got to start over with a clean slate, take a pause, and move forward in a transparent way. You said a few minutes back, we need proper competition. But who should be in charge of this competition process? Who should be in charge? Yeah, we, it's, it's really a, a, a terrible situation in that the major government procurement, and, and most government procurement is through is for the military, is divided amongst three ministers. So when something goes wrong, they can always say it was his fault uh, or her fault. Um, and so there is no uh, accountability. We have long uh, said that there's two things that need to be done. First of all, a single minister uh, should be responsible uh, for defense procurement so that there is ministerial accountability and responsibility uh, for procurement. Uh, second of all, though, that, uh, alongside that, we need to have proper parliamentary oversight of it. We think we need a special all-party committee to just look at procurement. If you look at the billions of dollars of spending uh, that has gone on and is in the process coming through the pipeline on the Canada First Defense Strategy over the next number of years, these are huge uh, projects. We have to have clear requirements. We have to make sure that contracts are fair. We have to make sure that we're getting the jobs and that the products are delivered on time. In the U.S., they have special committees that develop an expertise on this. We think we need that here in Canada, too. So if we have competition, uh, do you think we still can be ending up with the F-35 at the end of this uh, process? Well, I mean, I think that's a, that's a, uh, that's a concern. Uh, because we've seen this in the past, for instance, I'm thinking of the EH-101 EH helicopter, uh, which was cancelled by the Kretschian government. Of course, he had an actual contract at that point to deal with. Fortunately, we do not have a contract with Lockheed Martin uh, at this time, so there's none of that kind of penalty uh, uh, situation. But as years went on, uh, the procurement process to eventually require some of those helicopters led us right back to the same uh, model that was being contemplated um, in the late 1990s. And so we ended up getting cormorants, which is largely a version of the EH-101, and have not, you know, have only served us, you know, I think they would get maybe a C or D grade if a teacher was grading the performance uh, of those helicopters. So um, uh, in an open, fair competition where we have IRBs, where we have um, uh, demonstrable legitimate needs uh, for Canada, Myself, I don't see the F-35 being the uh, plane of choice here, uh, but uh, I guess it could be conceivable, uh, depending on that, that you might see the F-35s coming back. That's why we've got to be careful with what the government is actually saying right now and what the process is going to be going forward, that they don't just try to rejig this to find a way to get the F-35 back in. Cool.